Hello everyone, and welcome back to Captain Awesome Takes a Dive. Chapter 5. Everybody into the pool. Why look, it's Puke Jean and his friend Barfy Jones. Ugh. Eugene knew that voice could only belong to one person on the planet. Meredith Mooney. So much for our Meredith free summer, thought Eugene. Hello, my, me, mine, Meredith. Eugene said, rolling his eyes. Being Meredith, she was of course wearing a bright pink swimsuit and matching pink goggles. She probably has barfy pink flippers and a matching barfy pink kickboard in her mom's car, Charlie whispered to Eugene. It was the first day of swimming lessons, and Meredith wasn't the only person from Eugene and Charlie's class who was learning to swim. Sally Williams was there too, and Bernie Melnick and Evan Mason. It was like a regular school day, except instead of homework, there was water, and no desks because they'd sink. Tweet, tweet, tweet! Eugene knew that sound. It was the whistle of his old enemy, Ted the lifeguard, back to tattle a tail once more and make sure another kid wouldn't get his super dude ice poptacular. What ho, little dudes, he said. Welcome to my swim class. Shock, gasp, shock again. The double dipper is our swim teacher? Charlie nudged Eugene. This was badness without any goodness. We're really going to have to watch this guy, Charlie whispered. Tweet! Into the pool, swimmer dudes, Ted said. Splash! Once in the water, the class hung on the side of the pool and started kicking. That's the way, dudes, Ted said. You're doing awesome. He even had a compliment for Meredith. Gnarly kick, dudette. Gnarly kick? Does the Double Dipper not know that Meredith Mooney is secretly Little Miss Stinky Pinky, the grossest, pinkest villain in all the school systems in the universe and the galaxy? The forces of good could never let Stinky Pinky villain do better, even when it came to poolside kicking. On land, superheroes were fantastic, but in the water, they must be splash-tastic. Little Miss Stinky Pinky had to be splashed before her show offiness took total control of the swim class and turned everyone into stinky pink zombie brain zombies. Plus, the Double Dipper needed to know that Captain Awesome and Nacho Cheese Man were wise to his double agent ways. Eugene and Charlie counted. One, two, three. Mighty! The boys kicked their feet like they were chasing Mr. Drools. Water splashed everywhere. They kicked faster. Splish! And faster, splash, and faster, splish, splash, sploosh. Little Miss Stinky Pinky squealed like pink villains do when they get wet, and the Double Dipper ran for cover. Evil is no match for the splashing might of the superhero squad. Charlie, Eugene, out of the pool, Ted yelled. Not cool, dudes, uncool. Oops. Eugene and Charlie climbed up from the pool. I guess swimming lessons are over for today, thought Eugene. Dudes, why don't you chill with some doodly timeouts, Ted suggested. Eugene and Charlie headed to the snack bar. They were sure to get double dipped when Ted tattletailed to their moms that they were misbehaving at the pool again. But evil had been stopped and covered in water. A super dude ice poptacular is just what we need, Eugene said. Nothing more poptacular after a hard day of splashing bad guys, Charlie agreed. But the man behind the counter had a different idea. Why don't you boys have something healthier? A familiar evil voice threatened. Yuck! The friends gasped. That's right, Dr. Yuck Spinach, the evil cackling chef from Sunnyview Elementary Cafeteria, was now working at the pool snack shop. That's what he was doing after school. He was getting ready to serve his awful vegetable surprises to all the summer swimmers. He was even wearing his hairnet. Looks like evil had a part-time summer job. But no one wants to eat peas or zucchini in the summer. On a hot day... At the pool, double yuck. If the evil Dr. Spinach wouldn't serve super dude ice poptaculars to Eugene and Charlie, maybe to hand them over to Captain Awesome and Nacho Cheese Man. Chapter 6. The Blob Blob of Blobbiness Okay, little swimmers, give your swim buddy a high five for a job well done, Ted called out at the end of the next day's lesson. Class is over, so enjoy some pool time until your parental units arrive. Eugene and Charlie gave a high five. 
no waves nor chlorine nor public swimming pool pee pee will keep us from our goal of becoming the best swimmers in the universe those were some mighty kicks you did charlie you too eugene charlie replied i think we earned some floating time in the shallow end unfortunately there were only two pool noodles one was blue and the other was <gasps> pink and looked like mr drools had been chewing on it you take the blue charlie you earned it eugene insisted are you sure eugene we could just sit on the steps no one said being a superhero would be easy eugene reminded his best friend sometimes in the battle for goodness you just got to take the pink noodle floaty eugene jumped back into the pool and lay across his pink floaty the water was warm the sun was warmer and the young superhero had nothing to do but breathe there was only two words for a day like that Mighty, Eugene sighed. Actually, it was really only one word, but Eugene was a superhero, able to do super things, like make one word sound like two. Oh, look at the two little babies floating in the shallow end like scaredy babies crying for their mommies, Meredith's annoying voice shouted from across the pool. Charlie sat up and looked around. Who let babies in the pool? Eugene didn't answer. He knew very well whom Meredith was calling a baby. The fact that he had chosen the pink noodle floaty didn't help. Eugene expected to see Meredith playing in the water next to them. He looked up, and that's when he saw she was in the deep end. Stay calm. Make no sudden moves, Eugene whispered. Charlie, this just got serious. What's wrong? You afraid there's a big bad monster in the deep end? Meredith taunted. Why don't you two just stay down there and splash with the other babies? We can't let her talk to us like that, Charlie said. Of course not, Eugene said. She's given me a great idea. Slap! Eugene and Charlie slapped their hands in the water as hard as they could. Splash! A big wave of water rolled across the pool and splashed Meredith. Bullseye! Her pinkest pink ribbons washed out of her hair. There was nothing Meredith could do now, so she stuck out her tongue. Eugene felt so good about their splashy victory over Meredith that it didn't seem so bad that he was floating around in the pool on the pink noodle that kept sinking. But then he saw it, a strange blob, and it waited silently, as most blobs do, at the very bottom of the deep end. If this were a monster movie, scary music would be blasting. People would be screaming. Panic would spread across the planet. Eugene didn't move a muscle. Stay calm. Make no sudden moves, Eugene whispered. Charlie, this just got serious. Not again, Charlie gasped. This time, even more, Eugene whispered. Even more? Charlie gasped louder. Wait, even more than what? Even more than the last time it was serious, Eugene warned. Wow, that is serious. On the count of three, I want you to panic as loudly as you can and swim like the jelly squirrels from Super Dude number 32, Eugene quietly explained, afraid to take his eyes off the mysterious blob down below. One, two, panic like a jelly squirrel. Charlie screamed and, well, panicked exactly like a jelly squirrel. Charlie's panic made Eugene panic. Eugene's panic made Charlie panic even more, and Charlie's even more panic made Eugene panic even double more. Splash, kick, swim, slip, sink. Sink? That is not a word you want to hear on your second day of swimming lessons, and probably not even on your third day either. Eugene slipped from his floaty. His arms slapped at the water. His legs kicked hard, waiting for the blobby blob blob from the deep end to grab him by the ankles. Hold on, little dude, Ted shouted and raced towards Eugene. And then, like an ice cream sundae with a cherry on top, arriving to save the day, after a big plate of boiled carrots, a hand appeared before Eugene's face. Grab my hand, the voice shouted. Eugene didn't need to be told twice. He grabbed the hand and pulled himself safely to the edge of the pool. Thanks, Eugene gasped. No worries, Eugene, a voice replied. Eugene froze. It wasn't Ted's voice. It was a girl's. The pool water cleared from Eugene's eyes, and he realized he was holding Sandy Williams' hand. Oh man, the only thing worse than being saved by a girl is holding her hand afterward. Girl hand! Blech! Eugene yanked his hand back. 
I guess we're kind of equal now, since you've found Mr. Whiskersworth for me. Yeah, I guess. Eugene re replies were limited to as few words as possible. His face was redder than the human tomatoes at Salatza Pasta Sauce that Super Dude always bought from his local grocer. Whoa, are you okay, little dude? Ted asked, rushing over to Eugene and Sally. Eugene nodded. Rad save, Sally. Ted smiled to Sally and gave her a high five. Don't worry, Ted. I do this kind of thing all the time. Sally smiled and high-fived him. Eugene raised an eyebrow and snapped a look to Sally. Eugene wasn't sure if Sally meant that she saved people all the time or gave high-fives. Hmm. The thought of Sally as a, as a hero was a strange one, but it wasn't the strangest thing of all. Who sent the evil blob, blobby blob blob from the deep end to blob Eugene? Chapter 7. Welcome to Stinkto Stinkopia. Okay, little swimmers, today you little dudes and dudettes get to take turns diving off the side of the pool, Ted announced. Isn't it too shallow here? Meredith asked. Confirm a mento, Mare, Ted replied. And that's why we'll be jumping in the pool in the deep end. The kids cheered. The kids splashed. The kids high-fived. Well, all the kids but one, to be exact. In the deep end, in the deep end, in the deep end. The words echoed over and over in Eugene's head like a broken parrot robot. The thought of going back to the deep end gave Eugene a funny twisting in his stomach. Even worse than at the time, he snuck some of Charlie's spicy jalapeno cheese. The other kids in the swim class climbed over the pool and walked to the far side. Didn't they know that the blobby blob blob from the deep end might still be down there waiting to blob them? Eugene climbed from the pool and tugged on Ted's hand. What's up, Eugene? Ted asked. I am, um, I, I need to go to the bathroom. Eugene was already racing away before the last word left his mouth. Eugene ran into the boys' bathroom and locked himself in one of the bathroom stalls. It's no big deal, Eugene thought. I'm sure Super Dude locked himself in a bathroom before. Eugene tried to calm himself. He inhaled deeply. P.U. Bad idea. Eugene was in a stinky bathroom. Come on, Eugene, he said to himself. Instead of hiding here in stinktop Stinkopia, you should be out fighting the Blobby Blob Blob from the deep end. Who knows what Blobby Blobbiness that blob will be blobbing on of everyone. Stand back, villain, or else prepare to be cheesed by Nacho Cheese Man. Charlie rushed into the bathroom, dripping wet and blasting cheese. But instead of seeing Eugene trapped by a villainous villain, Charlie was met by an empty bathroom, now covered in cheese. Aw, man, what a waste of good cheese, Charlie sighed, then added, You in here, Eugene? Over here, Eugene called out from the stall. I knew it, Charlie shouted. Were you attacked by the Toilet of Terror? Hold on, I'll save you from its flush of fear. I'm fine, Eugene lied. It's just, I think I ate one too many Super Dude Ice pop -taculars. that's all. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie said, disappointed his friend wasn't stuck in an evil toilet fighting against the flush of fear. You've been gone for like a jillion minutes. Ted said you're going to miss your turn to dive. Um, yeah, can you tell him that's okay? Maybe next time? Eugene sat quietly and listened to Charlie leave. The twisting in his stomach was replaced with a dull ache, one that seemed to wrap itself around his heart. That had to be it, right? One too many Super Dude Ice Poptaculars? After all, superheroes like Super Dude don't get scared. But maybe their secret identities do. Okay, so you can tune in next time for Chapter 8, Turbo to the Rescue. I hope you're enjoying the book. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.